Hello, in this advanced Photoshop we're going to take a look at Photoshop's Camera Raw Calibrate tab or if you're using CS3 you'll probably find it under Camera Calibration. So just the name sounds quite scientific but don't worry we'll dispel all of this for you and show you how the Calibrate tab can not only be a handy tool for fixing the colours in your image but it also has its creative benefits too. Adobe has spent quite a bit of time gathering information on how camera sensors perform under a range of lighting conditions, most specifically daylight and tungsten, which is where we'll probably end up using our cameras most of the time. This information can then be interpreted and fed back into Camera Raw so it can give a pretty good representation of colour, that's white balance, across a wide spectrum of lighting. Sometimes though, that's not quite enough, and this is why the Calibrate tab exists. To offer a bit more control, so you have a profile tailor-made if your camera is struggling under tricky conditions such as mixed lighting. Unlike the temperature and tint controls in the Adjust tab of Photoshop, where they produce global colour adjustments to the image, Calibrate is much more precise. So, if you want to treat the Calibrate tab as a kind of advanced white balance fine tuner. And in this lesson, we'll show you how to use it in everyday situations. So let's start off with this low light shot we've got. Now the first thing you do with any raw file is you go to the adjust tab to make the major sort of changes to the image. So what I'm going to do is just knock the temperature down quite a bit and you'll see that has a global effect on the image. I'm going to leave it at about 5800 there and I'm going to leave the tint. So we've made that global change but I want to fine tune that in the calibrate tab to give a bit more blue in the sky but keep some of the warmth in the wheel. But before I do that, I'm going to just play around with the exposure as well. So I'm going to increase that quite a bit to plus 135 or thereabouts. And you'll see our histogram is spread out nicely. So with that done, I'm just going to finally just finish off just by increasing the shadows to around about 15. So we've made our main changes to the image. Now if we want to click on the Calibrate tab, which is right down the end there, and we've got these range of sliders to control the image. The first slider is shadow tint. Now what that does is controls the tint in the shadows. Now I'm going to leave that on zero. But I'll just show you what happens if I drag it to the left or right. You see the colour change quite dramatically in the shadows there. But I'm quite happy. I'm going to leave it on zero. So I'm going to move on to the red hue now. And what I'm going to do is move the slide on the red hue to the right. And that's changing the colour values of the reds in the image to plus 20. And to complement that I'm just going to increase the red saturation up to plus 10. And what this is doing is just adding a bit of warmth in the wheel there to the lighting there and the light we've got there just there. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to move down to the green hue and this is where we're going to make some quite drastic changes to the, get the richness of the sky. So with the green hue slider I'm going to pretty much go right down to minus 60, changing the green hue quite dramatically. As you can see that has quite a big knock-on effect on our image there. It's just really sort of enhancing the blues in the sky there. I'm also, just to add a little bit more impact, just going to increase the saturation there as well. It's about plus 15. So you can see there's quite a dramatic change going on there. And that's all down to just moving these sliders around. Finally, I'm going to move on to the blue hue. I'm going to leave that unadjusted because I don't want to change the values of the blue in this image, but I do want to boost up the blue saturation quite a bit. So I'm going to go to plus 35, and again, see the sky change quite a bit, and that's really come alive there as well. So I think it's worked really well for that image, but remember, each image is different, so you might have to key in certain different adjustments depending on what you want to get out of your picture at the end of it. But that's showing you how to adjust a, an image's white balance by sort of fine tuning it with the Calibrate tab. I'm now going to show you how we can use it in a creative way as well. So what I'm going to do is open up the other file and we'll get started. So I'll join you in a moment. Hello there, welcome back. Right, I've shown you how to fine tune the white balance on a, an image, but what I'm going to do now is show you how we can use the Calibrate tab to have some real sort of creative fun. What we're going to do is go for a cross-processed look to an image, and we're going to use a sort of a portrait shot that I've got here, and I'll run through that with you. So, what is cross-processing? Well, it's a term that's come over from film into the digital darkroom. Before, it was a process where 
if you took a colour negative film and processed it in the wrong chemical, so rather than the specific chemicals for a colour negative and put it in the wrong sort of slide chemicals, produce some really striking effects with some big colour shifts and strong contrast that would give some really arresting images and portrait and commercial photographers love it. So I'm going to show you how to do that using the calibrate tab and we can get some really controlled effects. You can use curves to do it in directly in Photoshop using the various channels but this gives just as much control and probably some nice results as well and it's a lot more precise than using the old colour method which had all manner of variables to take into account. So to get started we're going to go on the adjust tab as we always do and I'm going to leave temperature and tint unadjusted but I'm going to increase the exposure to plus 0.35 and I'm just going to up the shadows to 10. I'm going to leave the other three sliders unadjusted but before I go to the calibrate tab I'm going to click on the curve because as mentioned one of the key things is the strong contrast in a cross-processed image so rather than keying it in with the various points I'm going to select a preset so where you've got tone curve there select medium contrast and from the drop down select strong contrast and you'll notice the image boosts up with contrast and if we look there we've got our slightly steeper S curve as well so I think we're ready to move on to the calibrate tab and have a play around with these colors and see what effects we can get so if you just click on calibrate now the first thing we're going to do is cool down the shadows now we left shadow tint uh, unaffected when we did our London low light shot but this time I'm going to increase the shadow tint to about plus 49 or thereabouts that will do and you can see we've just cooled down the shadows there and we're already starting to have an effect on the colour of the image right we're now going to make some quite drastic changes and the first one is the red hue and I'm going to really just crank that down all the way down to about 82. As you can see we've already lost quite a lot of colour and we've already got a bias towards the pink and the lips are looking great but I just want to tone that down slightly so I'm just going to knock the red saturation down to about minus 18 but that's still looking quite strong with the pink sort of tone effect but we're now going to use the green hue to compensate that. So again some quite serious changes I'm going to do to the green hue. Again I'm going to go minus and I'm going to go all the way down to 98 and you can see it's already starting to have an effect on the skin and hair but I just want to increase that so what I'm going to do is up the saturation by quite a bit quite 78 and as you can see we've got rid of that some of that pinky look so finally I think we're going to move on to blue hue so what I'm going to do here is just increase that to plus 53. As you can see, having quite an effect on the colour. So yeah, we've got more colour back in the skin, the hair, and we're sort of keeping the background quite sort of neutral, though it's still got a bit of impact. So I'm just going to increase the blue saturation too as well to plus 32. If we can get it there. So that's a really striking cross-process look we've got there, with bags of impact that the original couldn't compete with, all done by using the calibrate tab. So I hope that's shone some light on what the Calibrate tab can do for you. It can either be used as a way of fine tuning your images and getting the white balance just as you want, or to get some really creative results like we've shown you here with the cross process look. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers.